now we will see in this section this approximately from chapters 16 in the fifth canto till the end of the fifth canto there are some questions that parikshit maharaj asks now can you explain the way various celestial objects move can you explain how this particular thing happens so now what is parikshit maharaj's interest he you think about it he is a person who is about to die no if we if, even if we have some spiritual knowledge ourselves and say if somebody is if if we are having terminal cancer and we going to die in a few days so we won't really be asking about questions about cosmology can you tell me something about the andromeda galaxy or can you tell me what are black holes so you know why, why is parikshit maharaj asking these questions about cosmology there's a purpose he wants to see the familiar in devotional light what do i mean by familiar in devotional light that he is aware of the universe as of the structure of the universe the structure of the cosmos as it was understood at that time but how can he see it all in devotional light that is his question so his question is not primarily about the universe but rather what he knows about the universe how can he see it in devotional light let me explain this with a couple of examples if i consider say many of us may have studied science to smaller or greater degrees now i did i studied engineering and i used to i love reading books about scientists their biographies their autobiographies their adventures the in exploring and discovery and it was only after i was introduced to krishna consciousness and then i was introduced to devotee scientists that i came to see how most of the scientists at least the pioneers in science they all were theists and they all saw their scientific exploration in theistic terms so now how can science point towards god so i knew about science i knew about scientists but when i read about how newton or galileo or copernicus or pascal or so many others they all saw their saw their study of science in a, in a spiritual way that was illuminating for me so science was familiar to me but when i saw that in devotional light that was very striking that was very convincing that was illuminating so in general it is one thing to get information about krishna and learn about krishna it is another thing to know what we already know and to see something spiritual in that so parikshit maharaj's question falls in the second category there are direct past times of krishna he is being going to be told and he will hear those but he already knows something about the cosmos and he wants to know how can this cosmos be seen in more spiritual light so that's what is described that's why he is asking this question and this is similar to a question which krishna asks uh, which krishna is asked by arjuna in the bhagavad gita krishna tells arjuna always remember me and my devotee is constantly remember me mat chitta mat gata prana always keep your my consciousness in me and then arjuna asks okay i am going to function in this world so while i am functioning in this world how can i think of you keshu keshu cha bhaveshu chintyo si bhagavan maya katham vidyam aham yogin stvam sada parichintayan so he is asking how can i remember you while i am functioning in this world and that's when krishna tells about his opulences in this world which is called as vibhuti yoga so the point is that parikshit maharaj is not interested in cosmology per se he is interested in a th- in how he can use his existing cosmological knowledge he can expand that understanding so that he can see god he can see krishna acting in the cosmos and then there are many cosmological descriptions like we read some descriptions now here we read about um, how the sun is moving and how that causes uh, the ch- variation the durations of the day and night so why are these cosmological de- descriptions given the primary purpose is to show how dharma dharma you can say is virtue or s- spiritual virtues and devotion they pervade the universe that is the primary purpose over here the purpose of the bhagavatam is not specifically to give cosmolo- give cosmological detail it is okay whichever part of the universe you consider there are many different kinds of beings populating different parts of the universe 
however they are all they are all spiritually oriented and thus he can see the universe in spiritual light so to understand this let's consider an example now there is the biography of shila prabhupad written by satsurup maharaj which is the authorized biography called as prabhupad lila amrit now if we read prabhupad's biography there will be a description of various us cities okay prabhupad came to chicago then from there he went to philadelphia i mean from there he went to new york from there he may be went to la he came to san francisco now when this is being described there may be some descriptions okay that la is a city of so many million people and prabhupad came in this part of the city he traveled this many miles or it took him this much time to travel so these descriptions are given but these dis- but the prabhupad lila amrit while giving these descriptions the it is not a book about us geography there is some geographical information in those in that book but the us geography the, the description of american geography is given as a aid to explain how sheshila prabhupad traveled all over america and established centers or shared krishna consciousness in various parts of america so s- similarly the bhagavatam's purpose is not primarily to describe the universe its primary purpose is to describe how there is dharma and devotion across the universe and for that purpose some details about the cosmology are given 